everyone, and welcome back to the Dream Life Loading Podcast, Season 2, Episode 12. I'm your co-host, Sky, And I'm your co-host, Susan. How are you today, Sky? I am good, Susan. This is our final episode of 2023, which is so crazy, and I am so excited for this episode. It's been putting me in the best mood preparing for this and just getting so excited for the new year, so I'm in a good mood. How are you? I'm so good. Well, I'm all right. I have a herniated disc, so I've been dealing with that pain. It's been intense. It's definitely the most painful thing I've dealt with. Like we postponed recording until today because it's been it's been rough. Um, but this episode did give me a little pick me up because I'm like, okay, 2024 has got to be better than this. So <laughs> I'm very excited. I know it's been because I mean you were sick. And this was kind of all happening in the middle of you being sick, completely separate from yeah. this. So it's just, you've been, you've been hit hard. Yeah, it's been, uh, d- the last two months have been rather rough, but yes. it's all good. Yes. You'll it'll come be, on the other side and it'll be even better. It, exactly. I have a great team of chiropractors and doctors and all the people are working very hard. And family, family, not in- like Chris has been yeah. so great. And Oh yeah. Chris is like that man transformed overnight. Not that he was bad before, but like he is just like top tier husband of the year material, right? Good. Very grateful. Well, since this is our last episode before the holidays, before New Year's, before everything, what are your Christmas plans? We are doing like a marathon of Christmases starting Friday. So we have Friday with my dad's side of the family. Saturday, we go north to his mom's side of the family Sunday on our way back we hit his dad's side of the family Christmas morning we do with my immediate family Christmas night we'll do with his parents wow what about you and then you sit in a dark room and sleep (laughs) yes and I will probably spend a lot of all of those Christmases laying separate on a bed because I can't sit like dining room chairs that's a no um, last night we went to dinner and I had to stand for, like, I stood in eight because I was in so much pain. So I'm just going to take it easy and hope that everyone's, you know, gracious with me because it's, I'm just, we're lucky that I'm even showing up. Like, <laughs> and I haven't been in the best mood. So like, I think they'll be okay if I separate myself for a little bit. <laughs> People will take what they can get. Like you're in. Yeah. I mean, I'm in, I'm in the building. That's all they need. Yes. It's like when Taylor Swift goes to a stadium, like they're just excited. She's there. They don't have to talk to her. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. That's awful. Um, yeah. We are, it's, it's looking a little different this year. This is our first Christmas abroad where we haven't had any family visiting. So it's going to be a little bit different. Um, but Nick's parents actually gifted us a spa day pass um, for Christmas. His mom was so smart. She had us open it early. She was like, I think you could use it over the holidays, which we are going to. We're going to do a nice spa day for the two of us on Christmas Eve, which is so funny. I feel like that's so fun. Like how often do you get on Christmas Eve? Because usually you're like doing things with family and obviously like we Ah. prefer to be able to be with family. But since we can't be, it's like, I think it's almost better than trying to do what we would normally do. I think if you're abroad and you're you're away from your traditions anyway, sometimes it's good to stick with your traditions. Like we're going to have lasagna for dinner that night, which is very traditional for me and my family. We always have lasagna. So I think trying to stick with some traditions is good because it makes you feel that sense of home. But then not being like, oh, well, we're home all the time on Christmas. Like we should stay home on Christmas Eve. It's like, well, where there's not much to do when it's just the two of us. So being able to like go out of our element and do something completely different will be a nice, like not distraction, but just a nice new tradition to start. So we'll do that on Christmas Eve. Absolutely. And then Nick actually has practice on Christmas, which is such a bummer, but tis the season, tis the profession. It's just the way it is. Um, but it'll be a quick one. I have a feeling. So I think we're going to get up early, do coffee, do stockings. He'll go to practice. And then I'm going to make, let me know if anyone has suggestions on like a cinnamon bun, cinnamon loaf, something like that I want to do. He'll be gone like late morning. I'll make the pastry. He'll come home. We'll do presents, have our day together. And then one of our close friends on the team, his family is coming and they invited us over for Christmas dinner, which will be so oh. nice to do with family and community and 
Um, so yeah, I feel like it'll be a nice, a good balance. And we have so many holiday parties this weekend. I literally think there's like five parties in the span of two days. And I'm like, how am I going to survive this? So seems like you, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> no, no complaints, but yeah, I think it'll be really good. Yes. The marathon of Christmases is honestly kind of fun. And I'm glad that a lot of times we have to break it up like by weekends. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of glad that we're going to get to do this like back to back to back to back. Yep. And it's almost like, I think you, you have a really good point there because if you spread it out, you get more drained. Whereas this way it's like, go, 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 go. And then you can feel drained. Like if you keep yeah. the adrenaline and keep the social battery yeah. just running on whatever it has left to like, don't let it run out. Yeah. And then you can just crash at the end. Exactly. I, I agree fully. Um, I would like to start this topic with my mantra goal of, um, not goal, my quote of the week. Instead of doing it at the end, I feel like it's very relevant to start okay. with. So yeah. I, I know I've been talking about Atomic Habits basically all year. Like I realized I quote unquote started this book in January and I just kept like getting distracted by other books or not like mm-hmm. prioritizing it, whatever. And I was like, I want to finish this book for the end of the year. So I really grinded it out and I finished it last weekend. And I think that's a book I want to reread every December because I feel like the way I feel mm-hmm. like kickstarted for the new year is out of control. Like I, I am, I am so like motivated for the new year more than I ever have been before. And there, this is, I have two quotes from the book that I think are going to be perfect to segue us into this episode all about new year's goals. So the first one is goals are about the results you want to achieve. Systems are about the processes that lead to those results, which that mindset completely is like retraining me how to make goals. Like last year I had the goal, be fluent in Italian. That didn't happen because I had no way of getting there. Whereas my goal this year going into the new year is going to be practice Italian for 10 minutes every day. So that's a system that can then lead to me being fluent. So like mind blown. Um, (laughs) This is, I think that this, like, this is literally DLL. Like this quote encompasses DLL. Let me know if you agree. It's a systems first mentality provides the antidote. When you fall in love with the process rather than the product, you don't have to wait to give yourself permission to be happy. You can be satisfied anytime your system is running and a system can be successful in many different forms, not just the one you first envision. That one was my favorite quote from the book. Yep. Yeah. That's wild that you picked that one out. That's too. the whole point. Bring my floating is the process and it's loving your life now even if it's not what your dream life is and then when you get to your quote-unquote dream life it's still striving for more like it's always ever evolving and it's always fluid and being happy the entire time like that is exactly what we are that's like putting it that's putting dream life loading into sciencey words yes and it's like it, it puts it in the mindset of like dream life loading is a systems first mentality which is like, yes. instead of like having your goals at the forefront, like, no, make your systems what you love. And then the goal will happen yep. almost without thinking. Yes. Like if you Absolutely. love your day-to-day life and you love your day-to-day routines and habits and systems and whatever, you are going to get improvement. You're going to get the, the outcome you want. Yes. That's Absolutely. So yeah, I thought that would be like a good way to kickstart into our our goals and resolutions and systems and everything. I love that. My quote of the week was, if it doesn't serve you, let it go. And I have just found in the last couple of weeks, I think it's especially with me being in so much pain and just being not a hundred percent myself. I'm really seeing the people around me and their, I don't even know if it's their true colors, but it's the level of consideration for others. Yes. And I'm like, I didn't, realize it before because when I feel a hundred percent I'm just like whatever like I can roll with the punches whatnot but when you're like when you're in that much pain you're like I need someone to like kind of be thinking about me a little bit yes. um and it's really made me feel that va- reevaluate the relationships in my life and I'm like you know what I might just start 2024 with like a doing a deep cleanse of my social circle and not that my social circle's huge and not that I'm going to just cut people off and be like oh by the way it's 2024 we're not friends anymore but just creating more space and more boundaries because it you 
you see people's true colors when you need them most. And I'm definitely, I'm in that season and it's painful in multiple ways. Um, but it's, I think I'll be grateful at the end of next year when I've gone through everything and been like, okay, like I did that for me and it was the right choice. I think this is the perfect quote, obviously for your current situation with pain and like having experienced this recently, but I think it's also the perfect quote for going into a new year. It's like, we, we talk so much and so much of this episode is going to be about what we want to bring into the new year, but that can also be what you want to leave behind. And I think that's yeah. like an approach I haven't even really looked at yet this, this season, end of this year is like, okay, like what did I do this year? Or what was part of this year that I don't want to continue into next year, which is honestly yeah. even more important than the things you do want to bring into the next year. Absolutely. And kind of piggybacking off of that same concept is I get when I get overwhelmed in any area of my life, the first thing that I start to neglect is like the house. And don't get me wrong, there's two of us like Chris does his end of things beyond that lately. Um, But I want to make sure that when I am overwhelmed, or if I am feeling unlike myself, that I'm still showing up and creating a clean space, because that only makes it worse. Like, mm -hmm yes, your head's messy. And then you let your environment get messy. And then you just get overwhelmed. And Chris, like last night, Chris and I had a conversation about it. And he was like, I just don't understand. Like you follow through on everything except for two things. And it's dishes and laundry. And he's like, you can even get halfway through it. And then you just stop. He's like, and I don't understand that. That's so unlike you. And I was like, I get overwhelmed. And then I just stop. Like lately, it's like I empty the top of the dishwasher and I can't bend over to do the bottom. And then I get mad because I should be able to empty my freaking dishwasher. I'm 23 years old, you know what I mean? Um, so, but that is something that even without a herniated disc that I am guilty of. In laundry specifically, like I'll wash it. I'll be lucky if I remember to dry it. And then once I get it clean in my basket, it's going to sit there for at least a week and a half before I do anything. And then you have all the dirty laundry around the basket because you can't put it in the basket. And it just, it's a nightmare. Yes, I'm very, very bad about that. So- my biggest goals for 2024 is to just maintain our home, like yeah. housekeeping. I was really good about it this summer. Like mm -hmm. our house was pretty much spotless all the time. And I hate that feeling where like yesterday we got a phone call and they're like, Hey, we're going to stop by in an hour. It's like, shit, I have to spend the next 45 minutes cleaning this place so that we don't look like slobs. Right. And it's not we, it's me. It's literally my stuff, but it's just like one of those things I don't want to have that anxiety and my house is gonna look lived in especially like 2024 is bringing a whole lot of change but my house is gonna be lived in but it doesn't need to be like Jesus Christ like do they know how to use a sponge like that's I think there's something really special about a home that looks lived in I think it's because yes, I such tr a trend in the past I don't know five years ish I'm sure longer than that but I think yeah. I've been aware of it where like the whole like I want my space to look like a hotel and I think yeah, no. parts of that like I I do love the neutrals whatever but there and I grew up in a home that looked lived in in a way where it was like you can be comfortable when you walk in the door and I think that is so special and if your home is like so spotless and so clutterless to a point where it's not comfortable to be in that's not what anybody yeah. wants like you have to have like the cozy home and like yes. a little bit of shit on the floor like that's that's okay like if you're yeah down, like yeah and but I I like this concept of like dirty versus cluttered I think is kind of what you're yeah. getting at and I think yeah. I've been trying to habits habit stack with I yep. walking into the kitchen in the morning if the countertops are like still have crumbs from the night before and it's such yeah. a small thing yeah. and so usually yep. I cook and then Nick will do the dishes and while he's doing the dishes I'll be like probably on my phone or like getting ready for bed or whatever, but I've been kind of habit stacking where when he goes to start doing the dishes, I wipe the counters. It takes all of five minutes, but it's like, oh my God, my yeah. morning starts so much better because I'm putting myself on a clean slate. And it's like, even if there is like a water bottle left from the night before or something, that doesn't bother me like yeah. little crumbs. And I feel like that is the difference between cluttered versus actually. Yeah. Dirty. And also finding new like systems like you talked about to like prevent this stuff. So like we, when we moved into the house, there were co like coat, there weren't racks, coat hooks on yeah. the wall. There were one hanging in the kitchen and that's like was my hook. So I've had my jacket, my gym bag, that sort of thing. And then there was like a uh, one shaped like, I don't know if you can see this, but like a 
I don't even know what that is. An L. It was like a 90 degree angle. So there were hooks on both sides and that was Chris's. But they took up so much space and then our walls literally look cluttered with our stuff because we don't have closets in our entryway. So we were like, okay, because now, now that it's winter, we have coats, we have all the things. Our kitchen table chairs, like when you first walk in, get covered in our coats or Chris's work bag, my purse. Like it just gets cluttered with stuff. Yep. So we're trying to figure out how we want to do that and Chris is like we're gonna we have a covered porch on the front of the house Chris is like we're gonna turn that into a foyer it's gonna be closed off it's gonna be a room great but like that's not a fix for right now right. um so <laughs> we're trying to find ends to that yeah that's a good yeah I'm pondering I like the idea of a like a closed in foyer eventually yes then that's probably like within the next year or two we'll do that um because the I mean, that room already has a rug. It has walls. We literally just need to put windows and a door on mm -hmm. it, realistically. Yeah. Um, we have a whole mud room, which will be great because our shoes can go out there, our jackets, you know, no, all the things. Um, yeah. So the I started hanging my coats in that little like Harry Potter closet under the stairs, but that's pretty far from the front door. So it's like, you have to remember to grab your coat, come all the way down the house and then put your shoes on because we don't want to walk through the house with our shoes on. Yeah. One of those, we'll figure it out. I'll keep you guys updated. <laughs> the coat saga. So I know we talked about our words of the year last week, but now that we're like into our goals for the new year, I feel like we should yeah. analyze them and kind of talk about, I know we talk, well, this is going to be a little bit repetitive, but I feel like we can shorten it because we did talk about this last week, but I feel like it's important for this episode to give our words of the year and our are you doing a quote of the year as well? I know I did last year. Did you do a quote? I don't know. I didn't do one last year. Maybe I'll do one this year, but I don't have one picked out for today. Um, well, as I meant, I feel like I mentioned it. I, I feel like this word came to me and it was like, that's going to be it. Um, is yeah. going to be my word of the year intention. And I feel like I want intention, not intentional. And I don't know. I think the difference is like, I'm thinking of yoga class when the teachers like set your intention yeah. for the class. And that's like, that's how I want my entire year to be. So my word's going to be intention. And the quote is where focus goes, energy flows. Ooh. Right? I love that. Me too. That's I good. Like that's like up intention. Yes, absolutely. That's what I was thinking. It literally sounds like yoga in words. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And it yes. gives a calm vibe with like the energy and the flows. And it's like, that's perfect. But also like that day and commitment to being focused exactly yeah no that, that's a solid quote I really like that and I my word of the year is purposeful say it again sorry oh I go you. ahead no no I was gonna say uh, I'll say it after I'll say it after I said, my word of the year is purposeful and I was torn between intention and purposeful I like purpose I think I'm trying to declutter so I think that purposeful for me I can register that more with like materialistic things like does this serve, does this have a purpose in my life? Yes yeah. or no? That was easier for me to answer than is this intentional in my life? Yes or no? Ooh. What it came to really realistic. Good. Yeah, that's an interesting purposeful versus intentional in that context. That's interesting. Yeah. Cause like if you're thinking about your time, I think they're, I think they exchange the same. Yes. But when you're talking about an actual item or even like a friendship, I feel like those two it's easier to answer yes or no so I took the path of least resistance with yeah. that one well and I think that's the point with your word of the year it shouldn't fight you you know like, and your goals no. shouldn't fight you either like obviously they should be a challenge but you should have your goals and have your words working for you so in this context like you have purposeful working for you and you can even ask yourself like what purpose is this serving me I feel like you can use that throughout your entire year like what purpose is this person serving me if it's not positive yeah let it go and that can be with people things events like work yeah. literally everything you can ask yourself that question yes I I agree a hundred percent what is the goal for this year that you're most excited about Ooh, I'm looking I think so I wrote my goals and I, I have some of them that are in the right context of something that it actually feels attainable. Like my example of being yeah. Italian, like the way I've kind of transitioned that. So I'm kind of going through all of them this week and next week and taking like 
the goal itself and turning it into something that's attainable. Like yep. I, my goal was to read 25 books last year and I read 44, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, and I think that goal happened because it was a like quantifiable, like 25 books, like, okay, easy to measure. I'm on book 24. Like we're almost there versus like, I want to read more. Yeah. It's like, how do you measure that? You know? So I'm trying to make sure all my goals look like that to answer your question. I think my biggest like intention is obviously like the overarching theme of my year, but I think finances is something I really want to focus on. I've been yep. someone that's like, I want to pay off my credit cards and I want to be more financially independent and I want to start saving more, but that's kind of been it. I have never focused on actually making it happen. So I think this year I have yeah. a few different goals that are going to like put me in a position where I can actually make that happen. Like save X amount per week, do this when you get your paycheck, like set up, like get a budgeting app, like all these different ways that I can actually make, like turn a goal into a system, you know? So I think that's, yeah. That's definitely what I focused on my vision board a lot was like, like debt free financial freedom, like words like that, that are like very inspiring to actually make it happen and really like kick, be able to start saving and kickstart my life more than I have been just because I haven't made it a priority, honestly, like to be completely yeah. transparent. So I think that's, and it, it excites me in a way where it feels attainable. Like it doesn't feel daunting. Cause I'm like, I've made these systems. Like I can do this. I can save X amount per week. Like now that I've actually taken the time to figure out how to do it, it feels so exciting yeah. versus feeling daunting. Yes, absolutely. What I love you? that. Mine is also finance related, which is kind of funny because we are not typically the finance girls. Yeah. Um, but I think that I want, so my overall goal for finance or wealth is I want to have enough passive income that I have a full second income, if not more than what I'm making now for my like full-time job. Yep. And I don't like, honestly, I don't see that being hard with all the different things that we do. Yep. Like it's totally possible. It's just a matter of instead of spending an hour on TikTok at night when we're just laying here, you know, capitalizing my time and posting a TikTok for DLL or writing in the manuscript, you know? So yeah. my, one of the, very specific ones is I want to publish my 10th book, which is in almost done. Like she's getting there, but I have, we have a very exciting thing that we have to announce first before that book can come out. You guys will see when, you know, you know, um, next, and so I'm excited That's for that soon. What? Yep. next episode, I think. Yeah. Next episode, you guys will like, we're going to spill the tea guys. And it's <laughs> the hottest tea I ever had on this podcast. So. Um, so very excited about that. And so I also want to dedicate time to promoting my books. I have an author page over the summer. I was posting pretty consistently. It brought in like, it was my fun money for the summer. And it was yeah. like, oh, this is fun. Chris kept calling me. He's like, what did you spend on Amazon? I was like, I didn't spend anything on Amazon. And he was like, well, we just got this huge amount deducted. And I'm like, Chris, that's a plus. Like it, it wasn't in green or red, but I was like, that was added to our bank account. He was like, yeah. holy shit you're selling some books. And I was like, yeah, because I was, it was literally all it took was one to three TikToks a day for consistent sales. And, and I know that like in my brain, I know that that's all it takes. And for Dream Life Floating too, like post one to three things a day. Yep. And we know that we'll be consistently either reaching new people or getting the people that are like, shit, I saw this yesterday and I want to do it. Today is the day. Like today's the day I'm going to change my life. And it's just a matter of being consistent with it, which was my word of 2023. And I think I was, I was consistent in pockets and that's why I think purposeful, I think that's going to give me more longevity because I think, I don't know, just the two words feel very different. And I know that I'm a year older, like with yeah. a whole year of experience under my belt, but I just think, I don't know. I just think if I'm going to consistently and purposefully devote my time to the things that I'm passionate about, it's going to turn into money. And I think the way you've been describing even in the past three minutes, the way you've been describing this is so brilliant because last year, I think we both said like, we want DLL to go viral. We want to be full-time for DLL, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, how are these goals going to happen? But even the way you've reframed your thinking by saying like, 
I want to post one to three times a day. There's your systems based goal. If you want to post one or three times a day yeah. for DLL, that's going to lead to DLL becoming viral and then DLL becoming full time for us. You know, like we've we've yeah. got so much in the past year because we saw what didn't work and now we realize what yeah. will. And I think that mindset is going to help us stay consistent together because there's no way yeah. to get discouraged because it's not like, oh, man, we're not viral and we said we were going to be. It's like, no, the goal was to post one to three times a day. We're doing it. We're successful. You know, like it's yeah. an easy way to not discourage yourself and still make things happen. So I, I love and I think, yeah. And I think the other thing is we're, they're not, I remember last year, I think we had both said, I know I put it on a champagne bottle that I think is sitting in my office that I want to be a millionaire yep. or a multimillionaire, which I like, still want to do. But yeah. like you said, we didn't have any, we had the goal at the top of the staircase, but we didn't build any of the stairs. And I think well, let's look at 2023 for just DLL, not even any of our other personal goals. How many times did we get burnt out and kind of take a break? It happened at least a handful of times. I mean, forget A and May, I was like, we need to quit. I'm ready to dissolve this thing. So I think because we, just like you said, I mean, this is just an example, but because we didn't have like daily tasks yep. as our goals, it was like, okay, we're five months into the year. We haven't achieved what we wanted to. We're failing. And that's yep. how it felt mm -hmm. that the way that we're structuring it this year like you just said, we're winning every single day when we're showing up and doing the things that we're committing ourselves to. I think last year we both did this where we created our goals for the new year as almost a wish list where I yes. at least like, I think we both sat down because we were in such like a, a mindset of like, we can do anything, which is still yeah. true. Like, which and still so much. Absolutely. But it was like, we're going to buy each other Chanel bags and this and that. And it was just yeah. like, oh, let's do that. And that would be fun. And it was more wish list yeah. style where there was no. We didn't have pride. We didn't no. have any way to get any of those things other than wanting. It was a want versus like, here's how to actually make it happen. And now this year yeah. we're really entering that mindset. And like thinking back on it, it's a fucking miracle that I'm sitting in my house right now <laughs> because that was one of those goals that was like, I want it. I'm going to get it. Yeah. And like, literally that was universal, like the house was meant for us. It yes. landed in our laps. But and like, before, if like it hadn't... we both had some things on our lists where like in the grand scheme of things, maybe it shouldn't have actually worked out, but some things like right. the universe is going to push it through and make it happen. And your house yeah. is a perfect exactly. example of that. Exactly. But I think looking back now, it's like, if if it hadn't happened the exact way it did, I would still be sitting in my apartment, which would be fine because I'd have a home. Very yeah. grateful for that. Um, but it's like, I like, what if I wanted to, let's say, build a house in the next two years, I could make the goals, the daily goals to attain that. And I think that that's honestly, that's what I'm most grateful for, for 2023 is learning how to do this the right way. And now that we know how to do it, we can teach other people how to do it and help other people change their lives. 100%. And that was the whole reason we started this business in the first place. Yep. We're just learning as we go. Think about how wise we'll be when we're 30. Oh I my know. God. <laughs> I know. Unfortunately, we got to wrap up. Oh my God. That's so sad. We have a minute and 50 seconds left. Oh my God. What do, what do we want to end with? <laughs> I mean, I think my favorite for this week was just going to be my vision board. And I know we haven't released it yet, but spoiler alert, we're releasing a vision board template and we both used it to create our vision boards. And this is my favorite vision board I have ever created. Like I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, like it is, it makes me so excited, which it's is it. what's supposed to happen. So that's my favorite of the week. My favorite of the week was the Taylor Swift movie because I finally got to see it. And it was life-changing. I watched it three times. So I spent nine hours. I rented it for 48 hours. I watched nine hours of it because it was just so iconic. And it made me feel unstoppable. And like, if if she can do that, we can achieve anything. Because that, I literally sobbed when she was like, this is the most, she was like, we're supposed to interact with the crowd. Like, eh, we're like, you're all right. I kind of like you. She's like, but no, this is the most important thing I've ever done in my life. And I absolutely love it. And that is exactly how I feel about DLL. I think that's why it like hit me so hard. Because it's like, no, like I know exactly what you feel, Taylor Swift. Yes. Oh, perfect way to end it. Happy you guys, New Year, Merry Christmas, and we'll see you in the new year. Yes, with a very exciting announcement. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for listening.